You probably noticed a trend in photography on Instagram where images are becoming darker, moodier. Photographers are using more and more black presets to achieve that new Batman movie style of editing. Dark tone images are all the rage right now, so let's break it down and look at how we turn simple snapshots into moody masterpieces using Lightroom. It's actually quite a simple technique that works in most lighting conditions. Let's start with this practice baseball game that I shot in Cooperstown, upstate New York on a hazy afternoon. The process starts by bringing down the exposure. By how much depends on how dark your image is to begin with, but I find that a correctly exposed image around a two-stop reduction tends to work well. At this stage, I also like to desaturate all of the color from the image because this technique has a tendency to oversaturate colors. We can bring back specific colors once we have the exposure where we need it to be. Something else you'll probably want to do is turn on highlight clipping to show us how far to push the white slider, which is the second part of the process. Now I'm not too worried about blowing out the sky, but I don't want to blow out the baseball picture. Around plus 80 is good. Then dehaze will be your next stop on the basic sliders. Not too much around plus 25. A touch of clarity and negative texture. Now we have a good moody base image in which to start introducing color in a controlled way that will determine the dark tones look that we're trying to achieve. We'll start at the top and work our way down. Reds in the kits which we need, but a little muted around negative 20. Orange brings back the color in the sand and skin tones. Yellows and greens are colors that you're going to want to keep to a minimum when creating dark tone images. The foliage and the grass will look much better if it's desaturated. Not much happening with aqua. There are some blues in the scoreboard in the back. I don't really like purples in his clothes, so I'm gonna keep those colors out of the image too. Next, we're gonna play with the luminance of the colors. Let's reduce down the reds and orange, especially in the sand. The grass will look moodier, darker. Aqua just brings up the number seven jersey. Same with the blues and some purples too. The hues, I just think a small adjustment to the orange slider to just bring out more copper in that sand. Now color grading is an important feature of dark tone images. Some blues in the shadow areas really helps to cool things down like you see in that TV show Ozark and some warmer tones in the highlights. Perfect. Let's go with a vignette linear gradient in the foreground with further reduction in exposure. And I'd like to bring out some detail in the tree to complement those autumnal oranges that we have going on. One last local gradient to the top of the trees to add some haze and a dreamy quality. One thing which is synonymous with dark tone images is fading the blacks, which we can achieve by putting a couple of control points on the tone curve and just bring up the very blackest parts of the image. The control points help to maintain the control curve line and keep it straight. Now we have a moody dark tones image, very different from the original, but still with enough light on the point of focus, which is the baseball picture. Let's see how this technique works with a bright sunny day. Taken in Washington DC, I was shooting through a railing fence to frame the house and monument in the distance. Let's again start by reducing the exposure by two stops and take out all of the color from the image. Turn on the highlight clipping warning to show us where to place the white slider. Around plus 50 is good. And just to help some of the detail in the image, a slight increase on the shadow slider. Let's add a moody sky with a sky selection and crank up the dehaze. Some clarity at around plus 25, blacks and a reduction in exposure. Now let's add a gradient filter to the bottom half of the image to introduce some more blacks. But I'd still like to keep some detail in the fence by using a radial filter and bring back detail using the exposure and the clarity slider. And of course, the main focus point being the big white house in the middle. This will need some exposure. Let's bring up the whites 
and a touch of clarity. This is looking really moody now. I mean, we could just leave this as a contrasty black and white, but that's not what we're trying to achieve here. Now, I said earlier that this technique can oversaturate color. And if I show you what the image looks like if we hadn't desaturated, this image would have been deleted by now because it looks absolutely awful. But if we go back to no color and gradually introduce some specific color, we will end up with a gorgeous dark tones image. We have some reds in the poppy beds, which will add a splash of color. I think around plus 85. Orange in the footpath, I don't think we need. A touch of yellow in the grass, but very minimal. Same with the greens. Aqua isn't really needed, and use the blue slider to gently bring back colour to the background. And both purple and magenta not present in the image. Now luminance on the grass needs to come down. And let's finally change the hue of the yellow towards that green end. A hint of blue in the shadow colour grading and luminance on those shadows will really create that Gotham style dark tone. A simple and dramatic change from the original, I'm sure you'll agree. Here we have an image I took in Kalani National Park in Ireland. It's a very busy scene with lots of blues, greens and oranges in the skin tones. The two important elements of this image are firstly the waterfall and then the explorer, which in this case is little old me. By using this dark tones technique, we've removed some unwanted clutter over on the right hand side. It's a little less busy up here in the top left corner, which was pulling focus from this magnificent waterfall and the movement of the water itself is more pronounced than before. Somehow it just looks like it's moving quicker. The color is more cinematic without losing the detail where it's needed. I added a slight hazy radial filter to the top middle, which just adds a dreamy quality to the image. You will want to decide which elements of your image are important and which elements you can lose which will help to bring focus to where it is needed. In this image, I performed all of the steps we covered in this video first, and then decided to add two specific filters. A gradient filter on the left, because it, it is simply detail in the image that isn't needed. But then an opposing radial filter over on the top right of the image to brighten and add haze to emphasize the window light, which is what I use to take this image. These two filters really enhance the direction of the light and make it less of a flat light. I also added a third to brighten the camera slightly. Again, this is dead space which does nothing for the image, but darkening the area leads your eye to where the focus should be. And the desaturation on the greens makes the reds in the cap really pop. Also, you'll notice that the skin exposure is virtually the same as the original. It's the mid-tones and shadows that have been reduced to make this dark tones image. Same with this image, mid-tones and shadows reduced, highlights remain the same. Reducing the blues saturation in the image brings attention to the castle where it should be. Now let's look at one final edit. This image was all kinds of wrong to begin with. The white balance was way off because I was shooting through a tinted glass window from a boat. So I'll use the eyedropper and pick what should be white. And there we go. Also, because of shooting from a moving boat, the camera wasn't straight, so let's fix that. And I think the vertical toggle should do the trick. With the exposure, I think I can afford to push this a bit further than two stops. So let's go with two and a half stops. Whites can come up to around plus 75. And of course, we have that nasty oversaturation, so let's not forget to desaturate all of the colors. And again, this would make for a cracking black and white image. I think the very brightest parts of the image can come down using the highlight slider though. But blacks, I'm just gonna fade up a touch to plus 20. And dehaze just brings more detail into the sky. On to color. Red, we have a few small items on the people in the boat. Orange, there is some warmth from the sun on those front buildings. Let's leave this slider in the middle. Yellow kind of defeats the dark tones look that we're going for. Green, not a lot happening there. Aqua, I think we'll leave alone and use the blue slider to gently bring back color to the background. Around negative 65 is good. And of course, purples and magentas, we can leave alone. Color grading, let's have some cobalt blues in those shadows and some yellowy greens on the highlight areas. 
and I think a couple of local adjustments. The left side of the image is far too bright and pulling focus away from the interesting part of the image in the middle. And some blacks too. Also the reflections on the water from the boat are a little underwhelming so let's bring up the whites here with the brush tool. And one last adjustment, adding a slight vignette at around negative 15. And if you wanted to play around with the temperature slider to create a more natural late afternoon color grade, then that's a creative choice. But, but I think I'll be sticking with Lightroom's white balance choice. So using some simple editing techniques to create dark tone images for virtually any lighting condition, you're going to want to start with your exposure setting. Reducing your exposure by around two stops for a well exposed image is a good place to start. And then using your highlight clipping warning will aid you in how far to bring up your white slider, which will then in turn oversaturate the colors. So you're going to want to remember to desaturate the colors in the HSL sliders, and then decide which are the important colors to reintroduce gradually and which colors to stay away from. Yellows, greens, purples and magentas are the colors that you're going to want to stay away from. The final steps of the process are deciding which areas of the image are important and which areas that you can lose. Using the gradient filter or the radial or the brush tool to darken down unwanted detail or even brighten it up. Try to think in terms of black and white images, how you would edit a black and white image. I have a dedicated video on my channel explaining why I edit color images in black and white first. I'll pop a link up here and in the description below. It's really helpful editing tips and I use this technique on virtually all of my editing process in Lightroom now. And hopefully it will help you get out of the habit of slapping on a preset that doesn't really fit your specific photograph. So that's your lot folks. I hope this was helpful and if you haven't subscribed already, think about subscribing because there's a whole bunch of content on the channel which will keep you occupied for hours. Um, give us a thumbs up, that will really help this video along and I'll catch up with you next time.